ChatGPT, Gemini, Bing. Three AI language models from three very separate companies. But who did it the best? First thing we have to do is meet our competitors. The first one is OpenAI's ChatGPT. Some of the advantages of ChatGPT include its efficiency, multilingual support, and cost effectiveness. It is free, and I know many people who have used it who probably wouldn't have if it had cost money. None of them do cost money, but ChatGPT most likely has your best bang for your buck. Its downsides, however, are its lack of human emotion, over-dependency, and its easily fooled persona. People have managed to trick it into believing the Earth is flat, in, and even though this won't affect anyone else, it's still a bit disturbing. Some of the cool features of it, though, include a talking option, which sounds pretty good. Oh, and it's also not run by a massive tech corporation. Our second competitor is Google Gemini. Google Gemini, previously called Bard, was Google's attempt at a generative AI. Some of Gemini's pros include feeling a lot more like a human voice. We tend to get attached to something that feels more human, and Gemini hits the nail on the head with this. It's also a lot better at breaking down information and making it more digestible. This includes giving more concise answers. It's all not a plus, however, as one thing it's bad at is structuring sentences and making them easy to read. It's also also not great at interpreting your questions, meaning you might not be able to get the answer you asked for. Overall, it's a good alternative to ChatGPT, so let's see how it faces up against the defending champ. And finally, we have the underdog. Many people were surprised when Microsoft added an AI into their search browser a while ago, and it's only gotten better. One downfall of Bing, however, is its question limit. You are only allowed to ask 30 questions a day, and that's why I've settled on 25 for our competition. It does do a good job of answering your questions, but sometimes it goes overboard and gives you way more information than you want. There's not as much known about this, but I'm excited to get into this competition, so let's get started. Now we've reached the testing phase. Here I'm going to be testing the AIs to see how well they can actually answer questions. We started with some basic questions about how well they can pull knowledge from the internet. These questions asked to the president were, the census from the year of election, and a couple more of the like. They all did quite well, so I decided to push them further with some more niche questions. They did not seem to know who I was, but I'm very small, so if we asked them for Mr. Beast, I'm sure he would show up. I then transferred to asking small questions that are more in ChatGPT's territory. I asked them to write a paper on concentration camps, as I've written one in English class and we can compare them to a human written piece. Gemini was not very great at this, so it got disqualified for not even giving me an essay. The essays from GPT and Bing seemed very good, but I don't think they could be submitted for a grade, as their writing style is very different from my own. The penultimate set of questions was about recommendations. I asked them for rap song recommendations and tried to steer the bots toward J. Cole's 2014 Forest Village Drive. They ended up picking this conclusion successfully, so I went to the final challenge. The final challenge in this video was giving the AIs some math questions. The first were quite lax, but as we got the basics done, I decided to go a bit more advanced. This next question is 11th grade trigonometry. I found this on the internet, so there's no saying whether the chatbots will just use the internet to find the answer, but if it can answer this question without using the internet, I will be very impressed. Our final test was to test the bot's humility. I asked the bot how it would rank itself in accordance to other AIs, and the answers were interesting. While ChatGPT did not seem to want to give me an answer, Gemini gave me its first long winded reply. Finally, Bing completely misunderstood the assignment and gave me a random page about who knows what. So there we have it, the three most popular modern day AI language models put against themselves in a feat of who can do the best. I really do think they all did well, but there was definitely ones that were better than others. Sadly, the model in last place is Google Gemini. To be fully transparent, I used a different app that used Gemini's language model, but was not made by Google. It, however, did not differ in the answers it gave, so I do not think it affected the answer output. Back to Gemini's performance, it did not seem to want to be generative, and its lack of variety in answers made it even more dull. It also did not seem to want to give me details, but just gave me the bare minimum, which, while not terrible, is not amazing. The next AI coming in second would be ChatGPT. I do not think OpenAI did a bad job at all, but ChatGPT seemed to lack some basic integrity of answers and also did not seem to want to give as much detail as Bing. One of the main downfalls of ChatGPT is that you have to buy GPT-4 to be able to access current web events, and I have not purchased this, so I'm only getting information from 2020 at the earliest. Otherwise, I think ChatGPT did a good job and will continue to be the main AI in use for our generation. It is very well marketed and the speaking AI language model does very well. This is an example. Who was your main developer? There isn't one single main developer. It was a collaborative effort by a group of experts. While I personally do think the voice is uncanny, it kind of reminds me of the Spotify DJ voice, and that's not a bad thing. They both do a very good job at simulating what an actual voice would sound like saying something like this. Getting back on track with the ranking, with Gemini in third and ChatGPT in second, this means that the number one spot goes to Microsoft's Bing AI. This is because it seems to know what you're asking and give the most adequate answer a majority of the time. It also is able to access the web, and unlike ChatGPT, does not require payment. This is very nice because it allows the AI to access information that is newer than 
than it could have pulled otherwise. Some of its negatives are the fact that it's run by a massive tech corporation, it's a lock-in to the Bing search browser, and it gives very long-winded answers. If you were trying to get a concise answer, I would not recommend Bing because it has a tendency to give you way more than you may have asked for. Nevertheless, it is still a very good AI and the winner of the video. Next year, I will do this again and we'll see if anything has changed. Will someone else take the crown? Will there be a new big player? Will Apple release an AI Siri? All I hope is that we can have more competition in the AI space coming from new companies. When ChatGPT took the stage in 2022, everyone was raving about it and my history teacher at the time even derailed the class for 20 minutes to talk about it. This is a random tangent, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and comment down below what AIs I should have next time. While you're down there, please hit the subscribe button because I'm hoping to hit 200 subs by the end of the year. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one.